Good evening, everybody. Sammy Thunder here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode number seven of Start of the Week. This has been a phenomenal series. I do want to thank you guys for contributing. And for those that are new, let me give you a brief overview of what this series is all about. I am asking you guys to reach out with some cool pickups that you made over the course of the week and to show them here on the channel. So if you're interested in wanting to participate in sharing some of your pickups, email me here, sammythundercards at gmail.com. Share a photo of your cards, a little story, brief background, your first name. And every Monday, I will take as many submissions as I can and share them here on the channel. So for this week, we have seven contributions, which amazing different pieces, a nice variety of stuff. Go ahead and jump right into it. First contribution comes from my buddy James, who has contributed in the past. This is quite a remarkable piece. I don't know enough about the color proofs, but I did a little bit of digging to see what was out there, and what I found was really interesting. According to robertedwardsauction.com, they sold something similar of a different player, and they quoted by saying, the final sheet was originally accompanied by six color process proof sheets, which have since been perfectly cut and organized by player and are represented by the 20 lots that followed this one. This is pretty amazing. For James to have the Phil Rizzuto color proof is incredible. The Topps 52 set alone is historic, but to have the color proofs, I'd imagine just really ramps things up considerably. So James, this is quite a contribution. I am very pleased that you shared this, and I'm sure other collectors alike are admiring this right now. Our next contribution comes from my buddy John, and John is submitting here the 1912 Recruit Little Cigars T207 of Walter Johnson. Now, based on the pop report that I looked at with SGC, there have been 27 of these graded in a three. And so a little backstory on this is that there are 207 cards in this set. Like other tobacco cards of the day, the back shows various ads. There are other big names in this set, such as Joe Tinker, Tris Speaker, Frank Chance, a lot of big names. But unfortunately, this set does lack some of the biggest names like Ty Cobb and Christy Mathewson. But nevertheless, the brown background of this set really makes this card shine. And getting a name like Walter Johnson is probably top of the top. So congratulations, John. Your cards are always incredible. I appreciate you sharing with us. The next one comes from my buddy Kevin. Kevin found this beautiful 1955 Topps Ernie Banks at a flea market for, wait for it, $15. Second year Ernie Banks for $15 with really nice centering despite the condition issues. I pay $15 for this any day of the week. This is a great find, especially at a flea market. When you find a second year Hall of Famer such as Ernie Banks, it's always an absolute must have. So thank you, Kevin, for contributing. My buddy Phil, this needs no introduction. Everybody knows this card, the 1949 Bowman of Jackie Robinson. Absolute must-have for any big-time collector, especially of a Jackie Robinson collector. I think of my buddy Stephen with a PH who loves collecting Jackie Robinson cards. So a little backstory, the Bowman from 1949, they increased their set size from 48 all the way to 240. Obviously, the design was improved with bright color photography, solid colored backgrounds, replaced the black and white design of 48. Set has a nice lineup of Hall of Famers such as Jackie Robinson, Satchel Paige, and Duke Snyder. Well, Phil, congratulations on an incredible pickup. This is definitely something that every collector admires, seeing this beautiful looking Jackie Robinson from the 49 Bowman set. Our next contribution comes from Thomas. The 1934 batter up of Jim Bottomley has a pop report of three that have been graded at two. This is an incredible set. This has some interesting facts to it. According to prewarcards.com, this set was produced in the 1930s, has a total of 192 cards, distributed by National Chickle for their batter up gum product, and issued over a span of three years from 34 through 36. 
One interesting fact about this is that the lower numbers in this set included some colorful tints. The higher number ones were more dull in appearance using darker tones. Thomas, this is fantastic. The condition of the card looks great for it too. I always admire when you see the cutout card still intact, so congratulations on such an incredible pickup. Move on to my buddy Doc V, the 1952 tops of Bill Dickey. This is a fantastic looking card, really nice centering and amazing registration. A career total of 1,969 hits, 202 home runs, 1,209 RBIs, 17 seasons with the Yankees. Fun fact about Carl Dickey is that he broke Carl Reynolds' jaw after a collision at the plate. A beautifully centered Bill Dickey to add to your collection. Congrats on that, buddy. And finally, we move on to my buddy Corey, who has, yet again, another video for you guys. So take it away, Corey. Sammy, my guy, I'm back. Just got a shipment in from PSA last week. Had to make another video submission for this week's video. Here we go. All right. First up, I have here my Jim Gillum. This is my 1952 Parkhurst Frost A. Is like rookie before his rookie. Very rare card. Love this thing. Came back. What is that? PSA 4. Very surprised to see that one come back to PSA 4. Uh, my 1954 Bowman Jim Gillum. This one came back at two. I thought it would get higher, but set registry chasing, do not care. Then we have 54 tops Jim Gillum, a six. Shout out to Layton from uh, Just Collect for gifting me this one. This was, I think, the highest card I got back in my uh, submission. So this six is absolutely beautiful. Love it. Then we have this 1955 Tops right here, Jim Gillum. Very good looking card. Like the color on it is just crazy. PSA 4 here. Gotta love it. All right. And last week I said my 55 Bowman was at PSA and it came back a 3.5. 3.5. Not bad. Good color on it. Let's see here. That one compared to the, here's the PSA, here's the SGC. I think the SGC one does look better, but oh well, moving on. My 1956 Jim Gillum, this is probably my favorite uh, Jim Gillum card of his main, uh, like, tops um, set cards. Uh, that's a beautiful car. I love the 56 set. And this came back a PSA 3. My 1957 Topps Jim Gillum of 5. That's a beautiful card all the way around, man. Gotta love that. Let's see here. First year in LA, 58 Topps Jim Gillum. And it had some. Issues on the front. It's like one of the worst condition cards I think I sent off, and it came back a two. Like you see, that corner right there is that's completely gone. But and there's some staining on the front. But hey, I will take a two on this one. I thought it would come back a one or an authentic. Came back a two. I'll take it. And this Jim Gillum fifty nine tops came back a two. Not a bad card. I don't know if there's anything on the back any stains on it. I thought this one would come back higher. But, I don't know, left or right is off. As you see there, still love it, though. All right. My 1960 Topps Jim Gillum. This is the first Jim Gillum card I ever had in my collection. The first one I found, I think I got this for maybe a dollar. Uh, PSA 3, love this card. Can't wait to build the 60 set right here. PSA 3, I love it. Next, uh, 1961 Tops Jim Gillum, uh, PSA 3. Yeah, yeah this is part of it. Yeah, um, when you send off 15 cars, it's hard to make sure you have everything. But yeah, this one right here, not a bad card. Thought it would get a little bit better. But yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Top to bottom was a little off, but I'll take it. All right. One of my all-time favorite cars of his, a 64 Tops. This is just a beautiful car. Look at that, man. It's just 
the color in this car is just incredible. Um, just this 64 set in, in its entirety is just beautiful. I love this set. I am going to build this one probably starting next year. But yeah, this is just an amazing, amazing car right here. So yeah, love it. Now for the big boys. 54 Red Man. All right. PSA 4. And most importantly, it has the bottom. You got it. You, you got to have that bottom. Got to have that bottom, man. That tab right there is important. Key. Love this one right here. Next, the Tops double header, Jim Gillum, Ellis Kinder. And if here, if you haven't seen it, you flip it over and around. There goes Ellis. There are stats on here for both of them. Yeah. Definitely one of those rare cards you don't really see all the time. But yeah, love this. Love this so much. And then last, but certainly not least, one of the bigger cars I got. Uh, I think this was from the Midwest Monster here in Indy, but the 1958 Bell brand, all right, PSA 3, miscut. I think it's, I'm not exactly sure where it's miscut. There's a crease right here at this corner. Uh, I don't know if, it's, if you can tell on the backside of it, but this is just a, a beautiful car, man. I love this holder for it. But yeah, 15 cards. That's where we are right now. And as you see right here, right now, you're looking at the number seven person to ever complete a Jim Gillum basic set. And I'm now number three in his master set. So looking forward to adding more to the collection and getting more of his stuff sent back uh, from PSA. So uh, yeah, thanks again, Sammy. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Corey. Congratulations on getting to number three overall. That is absolutely impressive. What an incredible submission as well, getting those cards back, the 54 tops. I mean, I don't even know really where to start, but your collection always impresses me. I love your focus. I love your drive. And I hope you continue to contribute. Those that are unfamiliar with Corey's Instagram page, True Cards Adventure, go on over, follow his page, and follow his Jim Gillen player run journey. It has been amazing. I got a chance to meet Corey at the National, had a nice conversation. So Corey, thanks again, man, for taking the time to create the video. I really appreciate it. I always look forward to seeing more of what you're getting. So finally, to finish this video off, I do want to share that I did make some pickups at the show I went to yesterday. That was the Hofstra University, the Jim Ryan show. And so the first card that I picked up was this really nice looking 1969 top super of Willie Mays. Thought, man, looks great. Had to get it. Here's the back of the card as well. Pretty amazing, right guys? This was the main reason why I was there though. I upgraded the portrait of my Christy Mathewson. I traded my PSA 1 plus a cash kicker towards this 2.5 from SGC. And the centering on this is absolutely phenomenal. Top to bottom, left to right. I am so pleased to have this in the collection. This was a trade within the community. I traded with B Roth 6, my buddy Brian, who has an incredible inventory. And I'm so pleased to have this in my collection now. You probably noticed why is there a gap? That's where the PSA 1 that I had stood. And now this will sit up there with the other cards. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Again, if you're interested in participating for next week, my email address is listed above. I look forward to seeing your contributions and have a great start to your week. Take care, everybody.